Hello everyone and welcome to a really wonderful game from round one of the FIDEHS.com Grand Swiss tournament that's currently being played in Riga, Latvia. Uh, you guys all uh, very well know the uh, a certain pirate that originates from there. Uh, it's a classical tournament and it features some of the strongest players in the world and of course the prizes are great but the greatest prize of course is that the top two finishers will uh, qualify for the FIDE candidates tournament in the next cycle. So as it's classical the time format is 100 minutes for the first 40 moves then 50 minutes for 20 moves and then 15 minutes uh, to the end of the game with a 30 second increment starting from move one so this is the first game we're going to show it's an incredible one uh, really uh, just a uh, you know beautiful attacking game so you guys are going to enjoy it and it features none other than the knight of sicilian uh so let's check it out fabiano faces maxim chigaev uh, and uh, he opens with e4 we have c5 the sicilian defense is on the board knight to f3 d6 and now d4 yeah uh, so nothing out of the ordinary here captures captures knight to f6 knight to c3 uh, and as um uh, we announced uh, a6, uh, Chigayev goes for the Knight of Sicilian. Uh, we have h3, this is the start of the Adams attack, you prepare g4, then g5 if possible, e6, and now the immediate g4. Uh, we have h6, stopping g5, and now usually white will play bishop g2, bishop to e3, uh, other moves uh, have been played here, but Fabi goes for a3. So it's a sort of a waiting move, but also uh, as you are expecting b5, uh, it will uh, help uh, you in the future, so you don't have to worry about b4 right away because you know that black is playing this he wants to be in care of the bishop on this long diagonal uh, and so on uh, so here we have bishop to e7 and now only now bishop to e3 knight to c6 challenging the knight here and usually uh, white will play some like queen to e2 here but uh, fabi goes for rook to g1 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so it's not a new idea against the knight of course you want as much support as you can for this g5 push in the future uh, so knight to d7, you do not want the knight here to be a target, and now bishop to e2. Uh, this is also a very, very important move when you play against the knight of, uh, because you really need uh, additional support uh, for that f3 square. Uh, if you develop the bishop, uh, let's say, somewhere to c4, and then your queen, for example, to d2, nothing is guarding the f3 square, and then imagine some like knight e5, knight f3 check with a monster fork here. So uh, here we have g5, black prevents any further expansion, also stops uh, f4, and now queen to d2. And now, of course, uh, black shifts the knight over to e5. So now, uh, if the bishop wasn't on e2, for example, if it was on c4 and you were playing blitz or bullet and you play bishop to b3, just ho, uh, knight f3 check with a monster fork here. Uh, so bishop e2, remember this when playing against the knight of... Uh, so here we have castles queenside and now b5 so black playing all the standard moves uh, nothing uh, new here uh, and um, uh, it, usually when you play a position like this when you have either castles on opposite sides of the board or you have castle queenside your opponent has a king in the center of the board you really want to play the prophylactic king to b1 move but here uh, Favi doesn't he here he just plays h4 so here uh, it's just a no, no reverse gear Fabi and uh, he he's going all out in this game so bishop to b7 uh, you do not want to capture here capturing here is extremely dangerous because then f4 and what is happening with this knight what, what can you even play here if knight to c4 we can just capture this and now let's say knight c6 attack the queen the bishop and once the queen moves we pick up the bishop uh we've eliminated uh, well two defenders of this pawn so not just queen f2 we're going to pick up this pawn and the black's position will fall apart uh, very very soon so after h4 bishop to b7 black also wants to continue development as quickly as possible uh h captures on g5 h captures and now rook to h1 Fabi would be very happy to trade rooks here to get the other rook to h1 and then do some damage along the back rank. So here rook to g8, adding another defender here and Fabi uh, improves with rook to h5, adding another attacker to the g5 pawn. For the moment it's very well defended but also Fabi just wants to play rook d to h1 and then maybe something like rook to h8 will also be a possibility so rook to c8 another standard knight of move uh, very often black will even sacrifice the exchange here by picking up this knight and then weakening this uh, e4 pawn uh, Fabi just continues rook d to h1 and now you don't want to allow rook to h8 so bishop to f6 guarding this h8 square and now f3 uh, also a very important move in the uh, against the knight of you simply guard your pawns here and then if everything is uh, you know 
uh, okay, on, on the queen side, you can focus on your own attack. Uh, and now black really shouldn't waste any time. He should play something like knight to b6, strike in the center with the d5. Uh, that's the way you want to play here. But here queen to e7 was played. And this gives Fabi enough time uh, to not just consolidate, but also start an attack. So here king to b1, he now goes for this prophylactic move. Knight to c4, attacking the queen and the bishop. Again, you can always expect this when, when going for this setup and playing the knight of end. You will have to give up your light square bishop. That's... Uh, uh, very well known, but it doesn't matter. Your pawn, pa uh, pawns are on light squares. Uh, you don't mind giving up the light square bishop as long as you could keep your dark square bishop. So rook captures on c4 and now b3, chasing the rook back. Uh, so you don't have to worry about this constant pressure here. Rook, to, rook back to c8 and now uh, Fabi could continue this game in a lot of ways, but he goes for the absolutely most aggressive one and that is knight to d5. And again, it's uh, nothing new. The, the knight sacrifice on d5 is very well known against the knight of. Also, there are some sacrifices on f5 against the knight of. Uh, and uh, it's um, uh, very different depending on what position it is. So the, as this is a completely new game, the knight has never been sacrificed in this exact same position but the theme is always pretty similar so here the queen and bishop are attacked so you have to be careful if you just move the queen uh, we simply capture the bishop and now it uh, doesn't matter for example knight captures we're going to play bishop captures on g5 put pressure on the knight the knight is pinned we're going to play queen f4 white is completely winning here so black uh, unfortunately or fortunately it depends on how you look at it has to accept this knight so e captures on d5 and now fabi plays knight to f5 so he freed up the f5 square for his knight now attacking the queen and the d6 pawn and the queen should defend the d6 pawn because if this uh, falls with check then everything will be hanging so queen to e6 and now bishop captures on g5 so just nicely recollecting the pawn here uh, and saying I'm very very happy with my position here even though I'm down a piece and now uh, how do you continue here? Well, uh, there are two really, really good ways for black to continue this game. And we're going to cover both of them since this is a classical game. We have to check out everything. So rook captures on g5 is one of them. This one was not played in the game, but it's really, really cool. And I really want to show it to you guys. Uh, rook captures on g5 and now, uh, of course, knight to e5. Uh, so what do you play here? The threat is knight captures on f3, attacking the rook and the queen. So we're going to play rook g8 check, king d7, we're going to pick up the rook here, king captures, and now we're going to play g5, uh, sort of um, uh, baiting black to go for knight captures on f3, but there really isn't uh, anything better. If you just move the bishop, then f4 is coming, so you have to go for this. Knight captures on f3, queen to f4 now, and now even knight captures on g5, but now we finally get this knight captures on d6 check move in, and you can't really keep defending the bishop. If you touch the dark squares, then you go, uh, you know, uh, on the queen's diagonal, then we can just play some like knight captures on f7 check, open up a uh, discovery and uh, recollect uh, the, the piece here. And we're just going to be up material and winning. So here you're going to have to play some like king d7, knight captures on b7. And now uh, you have this uh, amazing thing that uh, the... Uh, e4 pawn is hanging and black can capture it in many different ways but it doesn't matter how you capture it you have to capture it uh, with the knight uh, so knight captures on e4 and then queen captures on e4 yes the the entire variation is just really really ugly it doesn't matter if the queen captures or pawn captures because knight to c5 check can pick up the queen on e6 or on e4 uh, so it doesn't really matter. So let's say D captures, we're going to play knight to C5 check, king E7, we're going to pick up the queen, king captures, and now we get this position where black is up a pawn, but white is up the exchange, uh, most likely a draw, uh, as once uh, black uh, consolidates here and uh, connects his pawns, it's not going to be easy for white to, to counter that. Uh, but this is one way to do it. So after this bishop to g5 move, so rook captures on g5, really, really an exotic move. Uh, uh, in the game, Chigayev played, uh, not rook, obviously, bishop to c3, also a very nice resource, attacked the queen here. Uh, and now we have queen to h2, putting pressure on the d6 pawn, and only now knight to e5. So how can Fabi make progress here? He's down a piece, uh, and it seems like black is defending very well. So Fabi brings the rook to h6, puts pressure on the queen here, also more pressure uh, on this pawn. And here uh, is one moment where black has to be really, really careful. In the game, rook to g6 was played, and it makes sense. Uh, you're defending, you want to trade off as many pieces as possible, but knight to g6 was actually the correct move so you have to give up the d6 pawn but it's uh 
such an ugly move to make. For example, knight captures here with check. We're attacking everything here. And once the king moves, we're going to capture on b7. But now king to c6 traps the knight and we're going to um, uh, win, win the knight back. So this is how we want to play this. Uh, however, rook to g6. That's not a g6. Rook to g6 was played in the game. Uh, and now Fabi captures on g6. And you can't capture with the pawn. If you capture with the pawn, just knight g7 check picks up the queen. So you have to capture with the queen. And now we have queen to f4 by Fabi, uh, defending his bishop and also just, you know, uh, in enjoying his position very much. Uh, and it's very, very difficult to defend uh, this for black. So uh, just for fun, uh, you're playing black here. What would you play here uh, to defend this position, if at all possible, while I give you a couple of seconds? So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on going for that one move that we never want to play. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, pawn to f6. Uh, it looks really stupid because you cut off your defense uh, of, the, of the d6 pawn, but that's exactly what you have to play. And now if white wants to uh, have any advantage at all, he has to go for knight capture on d6 with check. King to d7, and now nothing is uh, really good here, because if you capture the rook, uh, that's really not uh, a lot of fun. We're going to capture the bishop on g5, and the white pretty much lost uh, all of the attackers. The knight here uh, is hanging, the queen is uh, being attacked, so white will not be able to make any progress here. Uh, just one second. Uh, sorry about that, really had to get that one. Uh, so after king to d7, uh, knight captures on c8 was w will not really be possible. So bishop captures on f6 will have to be played by white. And then, uh, unfortunately, we have this rook to f8. Well, unfortunately for white. Uh, now pinning the bishop. And now the only way to, again, gain any advantage here is rook to h6. Uh, and uh, then we will just have a nice rook captures on f6. Queen captures on f6. Queen captures on f6. Rook captures on f6. And now we remove the bishop here from harm's way. Bishop here. And now we have two bishops for a rook. Uh, yes, white is up uh, three pawns. And it will not be easy to stop them. Uh, but this would give black the absolute best fighting chance. So this is what you would have to go for. Uh, in order to save this game. However, after this um, uh, queen to f4 move, uh, f6 was not played, knight captures uh, on f3 was played. And this allows Fabi to really uh, put a lot of pressure because now after queen captures on f3, uh, you can't really capture on g5 because if you capture on g5, then knight captures on d6. Check king to d7 and now we pick up the rook and rook is defending the bishop on c3. So now the bishop is hanging as well. Uh, and there's really no good move here. You have to play queen f6 to uh, maybe guard the bishop, but white will very happily trade here, captures, captures, and now you easily escape with the knight. Knight b6 check, king to c6, and now even rook to h6, pinning the, the bishop here, and there's no good move here. Captures, we're going to play rook, captures, and now, uh, well, if you go uh, down the board, then we pick up this pawn and threaten the bishop. So you're never capturing this pawn. And, uh, you know, other moves aren't all that much better. So here, white would be completely uh, winning uh, if uh, queen captures on g5 was played. So black tried d captures on e4. Uh, and now we have queen to e3, defending our bishop and still asking black, what do you do? Rook to h8 is coming. We're going to pick this up and then the bishop will again be threatened. So bishop back to g7 by Chigayev, and now we have queen to a7. That's the good stuff, attacking the bishop, and you can't really move the bishop because then queen to e7 is checkmate. So queen captures on g5 is played, we have queen captures on b7, and attacking the rook here. Now comes rook to d8, uh, but now there is one move that uh, ends the game on the spot, uh, so feel free to pause the video here and win the game uh, for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations on finding uh, m any of the moves like Rook to H5, Queen captures on E4. Those are all very nice moves, but there is one move that, uh, you know, just uh, says to Black, okay, come on, resign, man. Uh, and this is exactly what Fabi played, so congratulations to everyone who found it. And that move, of course, is Rook to H7. This is what Fabi played, and it was in this position on move 34 that Maxim Chigayev resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the bishop is attacked twice, uh, so, of course, we're going to capture, and on the next move, uh, there are no more defenders you can add to the G7 square. Uh, and, of course, if the bishop moves anywhere, let's say to F6, then it's the simple queen captures an F7 checkmate. So, of course, the game did not continue after rook to h7 chigai resigned and a very nice victory for fabiano corwana who not only uh, gets his first victory in the chess.com fide grand swiss uh, uh, tournament but also uh, reaches 2800 again so it's like he never even um, it's like he never even left so he he you know dipped in below 2800 and then he saw okay i don't really like it here and then he just came back so it's like that with fabi uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to check up on some other games. Uh, also do uh, suggest any if you have any of your uh, favorites. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Oliver Nihu, the Hoodie Guy, the Ween Machine, Tom Derolo, and Michael Kennedy for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE Grand Swiss, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.